Hello, and I thought I'd do another one of those full hole design videos. Having done the one for seven, it seemed like it would be a nice concept to apply to a longer hole, particularly given that I'm kind of known for my strategic stuff, and therefore, and you can't really see that as much on a par three where it's just here's a shot, hit it. Um, I basically already built out eight, so I figured I'd leap to nine. I'm kind of doing this one in order. Um, just because it moves through different environments and it's quite nice to see the plot build out as we go. Now, one of the things I think it's useful to do before I start doing this is look at what we've done already. So you're trying just to see if there's any subconscious... No, I've tried to vary it in the routing as much as I can, but are there any things that I'm doing over and over again? So I'm just going to skim through the holes. Like We're kind of tilting greens. I'm going to redo that one a bit, I think, or at least tweak that bunker I don't love. The one thing I am seeing a little is this kind of diagonal bunker string keep creeping out in front of a green to really exaggerate kind of to the player off the tee which side you want to be on. Um, so I probably don't want to do that. Green sites, we've got sort of plateau, sort of banked into a hillside plateau sort of running down towards uh, an infinity green sort of thing. High plateau, plateau, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so we've got a lot of greens that are kind of like raised up a little bit, which is, is fine, that's going to be your default. And they still offer a bit of way to work the ball in from the front. So I think we want to get away from having a high plateau green, and I guess that makes sense given that we're going uphill on this hill. So, I've got two things that I want to do. In terms of how have I challenged the tee shot, um, that one's kind of hit at bunkers or over those two. Just got to be precise if you go down the right. Uh, that one's an options hole. That one's using a hog's back of sorts, slash capish tee shot. Uh, this one's reverse camber, creep over these bunkers as much as you can. Uh, that one's a carry hazard, and again, kind of similar to one, but very different at the same time. Uh, that one's an options hole. Okay, so I don't have any way you creep as close to bunkers down one preferred side of the fairway as possible. Maybe do that. Maybe... Yeah, I did have this idea of it's... Well, let's come back to that. The next thing I do, do is look at what are the features of this hole that we've got. And typically, even if your lighting is going to be this way, so it's going to look like this. It's easier to view contours when you come looking into the lighting, so I might spin around. Now the reason I like this green side is it's banked into a hillside or on top of one. I think let's move that flag just a touch so it's banked in. And the way I view it is if we have this kind of copse of trees here, going all the way around, need to be careful with shadows over 18, but that's fine then that's immediately going to feel different to a number of other greens where you like turn a corner. So therefore that's going to mean with the way the trees are, probably want to exaggerate playing out to the right. Actually maybe not, maybe left gives you a shorter shot in and it's like dead on at the green. So you could have a green this way. Now the other thing that we see is we've got this fall off down here. So that's making me feel like, I know we've got quite a few plateau greens but I think runoffs are quite common the type of course I'm wanting to build so I'm not too worried about that. Let's say we had a green angle probably more straight on than that. So what I'll tend to do is start by drawing out rough green angles, working out where I might put that, how it's going to play. Like if you start at the green backwards it, and have the green influence play that makes life a lot easier. So looking at yard to T it is uphill 30, so it's likely travelling around 300, 310. So you're looking at, yeah, five wood ish sort of approach. That's good, that's different to some of the others we've got. And then if you're playing out wider, longer approach shot, less preferential angle, I mean, that makes sense. And what else do we have about this tee shot? Well, the, f the fairway is going to work, as you can see, pretty significantly downhill from left to right, whereas the whole 
bends from right to left, which is quite fun. Um, I do have one of those already, but it does it in the opposite direction, so I think that works. Five, plus it's you know, it's climbing uphill as well, so <laughs> morning. Um, and then I'm going to have other holes where it's kind of playing, a the whole plot basically plays across a ridge line that goes down this way. So it's how do you use that in an interesting fashion and different. So we'll have another hole, I think 17 probably, where you've got a similar sort of camber, but this time you are going that direction and therefore you want to try to hug the inside line without falling off the fairway. Um, 11 might do something slightly similar. 15, um, I might try to bring it back the other way, but we'll see. So again, balance. Um, so these are the main features we've got. I'm now just going to try to work off it. You will s in terms of what you'll see, lots of measure tools, lots of me looking at the land and trying to just work out in my head how it wants to play. Um, probably then some placeholder surfaces going in and then we'll start doing the, the more kind of tidying up stuff that you'd have seen when we were doing seven. Seven, when you saw that one being done, was more there's a really straightforward simple idea it's just about putting surfaces down and making it work like there's less to think about here because it's just you've already got the one shot um, whereas this one we've got to think a bit more about well if your tee shot lands there then what and if your approach shot misses the, if you miss the fairway what are your layup options and things like that um, so yeah I'm going to go to time lapse now that's a bit of a longer intro than I planned but hopefully useful
Okay, I think we've got the idea there at least. So it's quite hard to tell with all the measure tools, but basically we're trying to create a narrow channel, I think. I don't tend to pinch driver all that much. Um, at least not, I do, but not visually. Um, so, and when I do, I try to make it interesting. So on this side, you're gonna have bunkers that are basically you're trying to avoid horizontally. And then this is one you're trying to avoid a bit more vertically. So there is a clean channel to hit through, but because of the dent depth they're staggered at, like into wind, you might just be able to hit at this bunker and know that you're not getting there. Um, whereas this one, I'm hoping even downwind, like carrying that, I think would be a bit of an ask. So this one's not intended to ever be carried. It's there to punish you if you're bailing too far left or sneaking a bit, cutting a bit too much off. Whereas this one maybe depends. Um, and then it's how do you I think a lot of what I try to do is provide a lot of width but not necessarily where you might want it originally so if you want to hit a three wood anywhere up this side go for it it's fine um, but you won't be able to reach in two well, you might you might be able to sneak on but it would take a really good shot and then this bunker comes more into play um, and the idea being that you're kind of bouncing on and like down the left side probably preferable off the tee if you're hitting driver and hitting a bit of a partial and rolling out down here well then you're going to have a slightly longer approach you're hitting more across um, and probably bringing this runoff more into play so what I then typically do is work back from that so if I've got this green site um, you'll have noticed I found this little natural kind of ravine here that I think I'm going to use as like planting probably extend it a little bit further um, so we've got some sort of scrub stuff so this which would tend I think to grow in like lower areas that's kind of where I put it um, but given that that's there naturally I think par fives it's tricky often to break up like this sea of space between where's your tee shot finish and where does this finish and have that look interesting so the fact that we've got that there it's not really in for strategic reasons I think even if you find this bunker yeah you're easily carrying to the other side this is purely for visual um, but what it does allow me to do is shunt the fairway a little bit further out right here so if you are laying up or well, then you're thinking about do I want to be here and I don't tend to use trees as hazards much but I quite like the idea of having one there just as something a little bit different um, of like a feature tree and then it's also a bit of an anchor in the landscape as well it's not all so open um, but you might have to think about whether you're going to clear that to get to this area if for whatever reason you were laying up right of the green <laughs> I don't think that would happen but it will make you think a little bit about where you where you lay up and whether you push it a bit too far here and then maybe you're blocked out I, I need to think about that one because I don't like the idea that you might hit a long shot and then just have to slice a wedge around a tree it's not it's, there's a reason why I don't really like doing this as hazards um, so yeah otherwise it's often what I try to do is how do you make the fairway look natural and I will spend a lot of time uh, that's probably a bad example let's find a decent one six um, I'll spend a lot of time trying to make fairways look like they make sense and bunker placements look like they make sense so that's splining things and trying to get them in straight lines but with bunkers intruding so even this is kind of a diagonal straight straightish line diagonal straightish line same thing here um, and although I've got really careful bunker placements of how I want to do that it's trying to make it not trying to make the fairway look relatively natural I guess um, and the lines make sense and when you are doing things like shunting the fairway miles out right here what's what's your justification for doing so why have you not cut fairway here well if we have some planting down here that feeds in and makes sense and goes through into this hole maybe as well if we can tie it into this hole so you've seen that ravine earlier and then you come back to it on nine that's that's a nice feature that makes a bit of sense um, so yeah and then I'll try to just work out once I've got my options in my head of like okay well option A1 is there maybe a secondary place is there 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 
it. Like there's loads of places you could hit it, but it's if you're hitting the longest driver, you're gonna have to be very accurate, or you want to take something off it. If you're hitting three wood, then you're potentially a little out of range of the green. So you might want to hit a partial just up here. And if you want to hit a partial, that's or have a shorter driver, you've got all the space in the world to do that. Um, so what I'll probably do now is chuck down the placeholder surfaces. We've done a couple of bunkers here as well and then get on with it <laughs> and now you see why I'm doing time lapses probably do it for part one of this one. So the last bit you'd have just seen was sculpting a sight line both on tee shot and approach and they're not perfect yet they won't be um, but you've got the major things in um, so that it's pretty decent and for a whole looking away from the sun I think this one will look pretty good. Um, then added in one more bunker just kind of framing kind of provide a bit more width kind of fill in a bit of space because we're, we're going to have a a little walk to the 10th tee anyway 
um, and 10 gets a good spot. So that kind of makes sense. Um, I originally planned on having this green a little bit further this way, but then I saw the hillside and felt we needed to use that. Um, a little bit of deepening the ravine. Otherwise, oh, and these bunkers just felt too small placeholder wise. I'll probably ex just enlarge them a little bit more as well. Um, just tend to have to make them a little bit bigger than you think. Uh, and then what else did we do? Oh yeah, slightly, this is the sort of pernickety thing I was talking about with fairway shapes. Um, this little lobe front, I see this a lot and it annoys me, <laughs> frankly. There was a little lobe because I was trying to wrap it around the bunker, but actually when you looked at it from the tee, it was like, well, why is that there? Nobody's using that bit of fairway. It doesn't make sense. The flow of where you are cutting it goes completely contrary to the rest of the hole. And I think you can do an awful lot with sight lines with just where you cut your fairways and how they lead your eye. So if you look at everything going on a diagonal this way, pretty much, it's kind of telling us which way the hole's going. Even though that's contrary to where it's actually going, I think that's the way I want your eye drawn. Because I want you to really feel that right to left slope. Um, and then that does also show you clearly this side. And then this line getting into very basic amateurish suppositions of what art theory might be. Just like a dead straight line across. Kind of feels like a really clear barrier of like you have to avoid these. There's no like hedging your bets against them. Um, and then I do want you to be able to see that little slither of fairway between them. Then on the approach shot, I think most of this kind of works. Like I didn't have to do too much here. Um, a bit of bumping up bunkers. Oh and a little bit of green sculpting honestly wasn't really thinking too much when doing this there's just a couple of careful flattens try to preserve that roll off as much as we can um, and just see if we can create some shelves and little tiers and things like that um, so yeah we'll carry on with this shortly and yeah I think next stage will be more careful sculpting bunker shaping, shaping etc and then finishing up with planting um, sort of tweaked some of the trees and how they interact with one um, all of this is placeholder this planting here so that will probably be redone at some point or touched up at least um, I like the idea of getting a little bit of a view into nine off one but I don't know how realistic it is to cut out this hill and give a sight line I, that that would be one way if I can make it work great if I can't I'm not going to worry too much just because I've got this bunker here that needs a hill and therefore maybe that's a bit tricky to open up but we'll see um, so yeah as ever hope hopefully that's been enjoyable and see you next time